Hello, my name is Veronica Brandt. In this video, I want to address what the difference is between the traditional Latin Mass and the Novus Ordo, which... See, the traditional Latin Mass kind of grew up with Gregorian chant, and they're kind of intertwined, and they really nicely fit together. So my argument was going to be that the traditional Latin Mass is pretty much the only way to sing Gregorian chant. It's its natural habitat for most of the Gregorian chant corpus that we have. But... I was doing some research. It is possible to sing Gregorian chant in the Novus Ordo. It doesn't happen very often. I think that's safe to say. So let's see what the differences are. One of the main differences is right at the beginning. So for a Novus Ordo Mass, things are generally done one at a time. So we have the entrance hymn, which is often replaced by a, a um, vernacular hymn. But um, yeah, if you look in your missiles, you'll see there's an entrance hymn line or entrance antiphon printed out, a small bit of scripture. So that's where entrance hymn, that's actually a longer, referring to a longer piece of Gregorian chant. Now, I think the mapping between what you see in your missile and what's in the graduale, that's another matter altogether. But anyway, so Novus Ordo Mass, you finish your introit, and then the priest will make the sign of the cross towards everyone and greet everybody. So there's that. Um, you have to wait for the hymn to finish before you can talk to everybody and then you can start talking to God and then you say more prayers you say the confidio and then there's the curia which you say all together so all at the same time the Latin mass has this layered effect now I'm talking about the sung mass because the normative form of the Latin mass is the solemn mass so between a solemn mass and a sung mass it's not too different for the choir for the, I'm from the choir's point of view so in the Latin mass there's a layering effect. So the choir starts the introit. The priest and the servers kneel down and start making their sign of the cross while they're facing the altar. They're praying to God from the beginning, from the get-go. So the introit is still going while the priest makes the sign of the cross and starts a psalm, some um, the confidio type prayers, and some more prayers getting ready for this great sacrifice. Then he will actually say the Kyrie, so usually the choir will start the Kyrie when they finish their prayers at the foot of the altar and start going up the altar because there's, there's steps. And that's part of the, the ceremonial, the traditional Latin Mass that kind of gets lost sometimes depending on your architecture in the Novus Ordo Mass or even... Anyway, um, so at that going up, the choir knows that that's kind of the roughly the right spot to start singing the Kyrie. So you've got this intro and Kyrie singing over the top of an awful lot of recited prayers which the priest and the servers are taking care of also doing their incense and stuff like that. So that generally by the time the choirs finish the introit and the Kyrie, the priests are finished, and the priests and the servers have finished their prayers, and there might be a little lag while we're catching up, we start the Gloria together, so the priest will intone the Gloria. So that's a, a nice way where you maximize how many prayers are going on, because while you sing the Kyrie and the Gloria, um, the introit and the Kyrie, a whole lot of other stuff is going on. As someone in the congregation, you can listen to the choir, you can follow what the priests and servers are doing by their actions. You don't actually have to hear their words explicitly. Most people have a missile, or yeah, you can, they often have little printouts of what's going on. So you can get a whole lot more dense prayer stuff going on in traditional Latin Mass, whereas Novus Ordo, according to the rubrics, one thing at a time. So if you're going to sing your intro, that's a two and a half minute pause, you're going to have while they're getting ready. Now, if your church is 100 metres long, you can be singing that intro while everyone processes slowly up the aisle. There's also, you, the priest might incense the altar while you're singing the intro, so it gives you a bit more time. But with a Novus Ordo, you probably wouldn't be singing the whole intro verse Glory Be intro like you do at a traditional Latin Mass. So you're generally not getting as much prayer in the same space of time at a Novus Ordo Mass. Okay, so that is part of what's behind it's not interchangeable it's not just like you latin mass people you can have your latin mass you can do ab orientum which is all ad orientum which is all totally true that novus ordo doesn't say it has to be the vernacular necessarily you could say that's part of the reforms of the liturgical reforms of 1970 but the novus ordo itself is in latin <laughs> so you can have latin you can have communion on the tongue you can have the priest facing god you can have all this stuff but it's still not quite the same not quite as beautifully linked together and so so streamlined and so elegant and 
so ancient. You find all these different historical bits about tiny little details which were invented by different saints. Like, yeah, when the, the last gospel was in, like installed and all these other things, and, and we need that. So, although I am hoping to be obedient to whatever is decided, there is a valid thing here. That there's a traditional Latin mass of something that's not there in a nervous order. Also, the nervous order, it's all optional. So even if you choose, you can have someone to choose all those most like the Latin mass options, but um, who's, it, it's only by an act of the willpower of the people involved that that can be maintained. So, yeah, you can still have all that splintering, the dissipation that, you get normally okay so I think that's my rant um okay it's good to get this off my chest I haven't heard other people explaining this from the point of view of the actual practicals the actual differences because a lot of people say the traditional Latin mass is intrinsically more reverent but they don't go into why so there are a lot of little details that were changed well even things that weren't changed but just left out like um, the priest holding his fingers together there's a name for that I can't remember but I've seen Never sort of priests do that. You can do it still. It's just not in the rubrics apparently or something like that. So, um, yeah, I'm not an expert. But, yeah, even from my point of view of just what to sing when. Singing in the Latin Mass is really special because you're being part of that. One article talked, because the priest says the things that the choir says, they're saying like that the, makes the choir like window dressing. But it's not. Because the priest is saying that it, it's still... It doesn't make the choir useless, but it makes it so beautiful because the choir has a lot more free time and the choir isn't the center of attention too. Usually the land mass, the choir is at the back. We're, yeah, we're contributing, we're, we're singing the, the mass, like the ancient, um, who knows how old these chants are. I mean, yeah, they go back centuries and because the rules say you can't really substitute them out, you can psalm tone them if you can't get the melodies. But it actually, I don't think I would ever have actually planned to learn half the Liber Usualis off my own bat. Okay. I mean, yeah, if it was just been going to Nervous Auto Mass, might have learnt like half a dozen different chant tunes and thrown them in every now and then. But it is a huge challenge to learn the propers for every week. And that's amazing. And yeah, if you don't have that framework, if you don't sort of sign up for that, there's no sort of push to make you do that, to reach those high goals. God bless you. Yeah, all the best. Bye.